what's new from the Kremlin. Sputniks 1 and 2 are chasing each other merrily around the Earth, and everyone's keeping a weather eye on the moon, in case it suddenly sprouts a few more craters. Ever since the first man-made satellite shook the world with its technical and military implications, there's been a very cheerful air about Khrushchev. He tells the West, just keep looking, we've plenty more up our sleeve. Persistent rumors have named the moon, a quarter million miles away, as the next target. But why the moon? There are no Hungarians there. This year, Russia celebrates the 100th anniversary of the birth of an early prophet of space travel, Konstantin Selkovsky, seen in these old newsreel shots. Selkovsky wrote many important papers on aeronautics and jet propulsion, but seeing further, he wrote, Man will not remain eternally on Earth, but in his quest for light and space, he will penetrate, timidly at first, beyond the limits of the atmosphere, and will later conquer all space around the sun. Even Tsiolkovsky didn't foresee that the pioneers of space travel would be dogs. These are the first pictures of Russia's space dogs, huskies of the same tough breed as Laika, the passenger in Sputnik II. Several of them have already been rocketed to tremendous altitudes and recovered safely by parachute. Specially trained to travel in these flying dog kennels, they've made their strange journeys both singly and in pairs. And now for a dog-carrying rocket actually taking off. Let us have friendly competition in space travel, says Mr. Khrushchev. Let us have a commonwealth of Sputniks. Fine words, but the free world wants stronger evidence of a change of heart. For a rocket that can carry a dog can carry an H-bomb. Meanwhile, back to Earth comes at least one Russian with peaceful intentions, one of the patient space huskies. Next stop, perhaps the moon. But if you don't mind, not this chap. He's very keen just now to be told, where's the nearest tree? <laughs> 